My name's Rachel and I'm the Red Squirrel Officer at Lancashire Wildlife Trust. And this is my dog Max, our Red Squirrel Detection Dog. Lancashire Wildlife Trust are a partner in the Red Squirrels United project, a UK-wide Red Squirrel conservation project working across England, Wales and Northern Ireland. One of the biggest threats facing Red Squirrel populations in the UK is the squirrel pox virus. This virus is carried by grey squirrels which are immune to it and do not suffer from any of the symptoms but it is fatal to red squirrels which usually die within a couple of weeks of contracting it. Unfortunately, we have experienced outbreaks of squirrel pox virus in the red squirrel populations throughout the Red Squirrels United project area. During a squirrel pox outbreak, any carcasses remaining in the environment can continue to be a source of infection. There are also other diseases that display similar symptoms to pox and without testing, you never know for sure what you are dealing with. Disease outbreaks are difficult to detect in more remote areas or in low-density red squirrel populations unless carcasses are found. In some cases, volunteers have spent many hours searching for carcasses but with little success. So we thought, what else can we do? Most people have heard of detection dogs being used in the police and military to detect drugs and explosives, but their skills can be put to use far more broadly, including in conservation. A dog's drive, determination and energy makes them ideal for the kinds of scenarios we find ourselves surveying in. They can search areas far more quickly and effectively, and as they rely on smell instead of sight, obstacles such as overgrown vegetation are not such an issue. We had the opportunity to work with Cryas Canine Limited, who developed a taster workshop on how to train a detection dog for us. We started with a basic memory retrieve, in this exercise, the dog sees where you hide the ball and then is sent back to retrieve it. This is then made progressively harder by moving the ball further away from where the dog sees you place it, so the dog has to work harder to find it each time. We then moved on to indication training. When we are searching for dead red squirrels, we don't want the dog to pick up any carcasses due to the risk of contamination, both to the dog and the squirrel, so we want them to indicate passively, in this case, sitting and staring. They then demonstrated how to train dogs onto a specific scent. The dog starts with searching for their favourite toy, a piece of ball or kong, then we introduce the scent, in our case, red squirrels. The piece of toy gets progressively smaller until the dogs are just searching for the squirrel. We also had a chance to practice quartering, a technique enabling you and your dog to effectively and thoroughly search an area. Obviously, the workshop was just a taster of what is involved in training a conservation detection dog, and this cannot be achieved in one day. It is crucial to find a dog that not only has a good nose, but also has the drive to continue searching and not give up. In the middle of a disease outbreak, you need a dog you can rely on to do the job. This is not enough though, as the handler plays a really important role as well. Dog and handler need need to be a team to ensure areas get searched fully and thoroughly. So what does the future hold now? Well Max and I are going to continue refining our skills and we will hopefully be able to realise the potential of this new survey technique. We hope our red squirrel populations remain healthy, but we are now not only better equipped to detect and identify a disease outbreak, but also have another resource to manage it. Every little bit helps in the conservation of one of our most endangered mammals.